Today we're automating a task by building a custom Copilot agent that starts off in Outlook and moves the activity to SharePoint, Word, and ends in Teams. It's super powerful and easy to make and you can follow along step by step. My name is Shervin Shafi and I'm a Copilot Principal Engineer at Microsoft. Welcome to Collaboration Simplified. Let's do a quick demo. Here we're looking at the email for Albert Einstein. He's about to send an email off to Arnold asking him for help for someone that he's trying to hire on the team. Hey Arnold, do you think we have anyone that matches this job posting? And this job posting is actually live on the Microsoft site. And then he wants us me to discuss. When he sends us off to Arnold, I'm gonna switch over to Arnold's inbox. It comes into Arnold's inbox without Arnold lifting a finger. <laughs> This agent is autonomous. It starts up and it does all the heavy lifting for Arnold. So Arnold can go work out while this agent's doing all the work for him. This is the job posting. It's on the Microsoft site for a principal product manager. But we're gonna switch back to Albert Einstein's inbox because we're gonna wait for the magic of this autonomous agent to happen. The email from Arnold or more like from his agent says, hey Albert, thanks for sharing the job posting for the principal product manager role. I've reviewed the description with our current bench of candidates. Please find the attached document that includes a detailed analysis. Here's a document. But in summary, Zoe Petroni is the strongest fit with Jose Gonzalez as a strong secondary. I have also scheduled a meeting to discuss with you further. Let's go ahead and click on this document. I've designed it so that initially it gives an executive summary. It talks about Zoe, it talks about her experience, and it also talks about Jose as a secondary option, as well as other candidates that are not suitable, but they were considered. And it also has the resumes for each of these people. So this is kind of like the whole document, the Word document that was sent. And you can see that for each person, there is information about the technical ability, leadership, culture fit, and then an overall fit. For Zoe, it's excellent. For Jose, it's very good. And then for the other folks, like Jessica Lynn, it's either moderate or low. So there's less information for those. But if you wanted to, you can always click on Jordan Avery's full resume or any one of them. So here's Jordan's and you can do it for the other people as well. If we go back here to the email, this is also the follow-up invite that was sent. And the invitation here is a discussion on the principal product manager role and candidate recommendation. So we're gonna go ahead and accept this. This entire workflow of someone asking for a candidate gets automated with deep analysis, emails, Word document generation, Outlook invitation, all of that happens. Now we're gonna dive into actually how we built this. So on the building side, as I mentioned, I use Microsoft Copilot Studio and if you're curious, if this is your first time, I've done other videos that kind of steps you through how to get access, how to log in. First, I gave this agent a name, I called it the matchmaker, and I also gave it a logo. So all of this, if you select edit, you can go ahead and make some changes. So here I can change the name, I can change the icon. You also have to give it a description. So I gave it a description here that says, this is an autonomous agent that receives emails related to job posting, matches the candidates to the posting and ranks them, all right? The description is not super important other than when you share it, then people know what this agent does, but it doesn't affect the function of the agent. Now, one of the more important things is that I actually selected the model of the agent to be GPT-5. When I select this dropdown, I have choices of GPT-5, five reasoning that takes more time, and then also some cloud. We're using GPT-5. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, the key to making this an autonomous agent is this trigger component. So here, I have a trigger set up for when a new email arrives, version three. So really, all you gotta do, if this is your first time doing it, you just select add trigger, and then you get all the options of triggers. Initially, you're looking at the feature section, but you wanna go ahead and go to all. And then when you go to all, instead of 11 triggers, we end up with 869 triggers. You can also search over here. The one that I use actually isn't featured, it's, it's easy to find. 
and it's this one right here. The bulk of this is really in the instructions, which as usual, I'll just copy and paste it and put it in the comment section. So you can just copy and paste it for yourself. I'll come back to it in just one second. Let's skip it and go down to knowledge. What I've done for this knowledge section, I have this hiring bench folder part of SharePoint. So if I select it, there's not much to it other than the fact that it's just a folder except that I have given it a description saying that this folder contains the resumes of all candidates that are to be hired. So this is helpful for the agent to know what's in this. If it's your first time doing it, all you do is if we go back to overview and we scroll down to knowledge, you select add knowledge right here. So you select add knowledge and then you have your choices of where the agent is getting its knowledge from public websites, SharePoint, and so on, or you can even, even upload files from your OneDrive. So in this case, what I did was I selected SharePoint and then I selected browse on the left hand side, your folder should show up in here. And for me, it was my hiring bench that I selected that has all the folders that I've dropped in of different candidates that I've vetted out in the past. So these are all the folks that you saw before in that Word document. To kind of back up a second, I wanted to show you that I do have a SharePoint site for human resources. And in here, that hiring bench is basically a folder where I've dropped everything in. So when I go to Copilot Studio, it knows because it's my same login and credentials and what I have access to. So going back to Copilot Studio, you put your knowledge source in, which for me was essentially just that entire folder. And the next thing to do is to fill out the tools that we're using for this agent. For the tools, I've opted to use this newer technology that we have, which is MCP. And I have this Outlook Mail MCP, Word MCP, and Meeting Management MCP. So three different tools. Under each of them, there's a lot of different functions that they have, and I found MCP a lot more comfortable to use than the other connectors that we have. So as an example, if you're going to add a tool initially, you just select add tool. In normal fashion, you have all, you have featured, you have connectors, you have all these different things, but you also have MCP. So if you select MCP, then you'll see those three different tools that I've selected. Just go ahead and find them in here. Like there's a Microsoft Word MCP. So find them and match them to what this agent is using and just add them to your agent. If I click one on one of them, for example, this Outlook Mail MCP server, it uses your credentials to connect. You get this green checkbox. If you scroll down, you'll see all the different tools that are part of the MCP server. What makes MCP incredible is that it's not just able to do one thing, but it can, this Outlook one, can add attachments, it can update a draft recipients, it can create and send an email. It can do so many things as part of one MCP connection. So I'm using this one to draft the email and send it and attach the Word document. And then I'm using the Word document one to create the Word document and use the information from the SharePoint repository. So you can see all the tools for the Word document like create a new one. And then I'm also using this meeting management to set up that calendar invitation. The one tip here is that as I went through all the functions, all the tools, today it can create a meeting calendar invite, but it doesn't provide a Teams meeting link in there. So you add these three MCP tools. Once you've done that, if we go back to overview, that's about it other than the instructions. There's nothing else that I've done here. There's nothing I've done in topics, nothing in suggested prompts, nothing on agents, the multi-agent orchestration. What is it that I've done in the instructions? Instructions. When a new email arrives, determine if it's related to hiring or job postings. If it is, see if there's a job description link in the email and review the job description in the link. Okay, so we're kind of setting it up, telling the agent what to do. Next, compare the job description to the candidates that are on the hiring bench in the SharePoint site of your knowledges. Then using the Word MCP tool, create a detailed document that compares each resume in the folder to the job description and compares them for technical ability, leadership, culture fit, and other factors. You saw those bullets in the Word document because we're telling it. And this is your chance to modify the instructions. If you're looking for something else, then 
put those in there and also provide an overall rating in terms of the job fit for each candidate. You can say percentage, we were using words like excellent or moderate. Do not use a table, but instead write a detailed paragraph along with bullets for each candidate. For each candidate, provide a link to their full resume, that's how the link shows up. And at the top of the document, create an executive summary that you saw highlighting who you recommend and why you recommend them. Then, using the Outlook MCP tool, create a professional email reply to the sender and let them know that you looked at the job posting and are attaching a document with potential candidates. Make sure the email is formatted in HTML and send it to them as soon as you've created it. The reason why I said this is because I noticed during my testing that if I don't say send it right away, sometimes the agent just kind of gets stuck. This also happens to the meeting invitation, which you'll see in the next section. Using the meeting management MCP server tool, find an opening between nine to five PST in the next seven days. And without asking for permission, again, just do it, create a meeting for 30 minutes and let them know that I'll update the invite with a Teams meeting link after they've accepted it. And that's ultimately all there is to it. AI for automation isn't about replacing jobs, it's about taking those mundane things that you do and making it so that it's done automatically and then you can go do bigger and better things. Maybe train yourself on AI and agents or maybe like Arnold, go hit the gym while the agent is doing all the heavy lifting for you. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.